DoorDash acceptance rate does matter, and here's why you should care. If you've been a DoorDash driver for almost any length of time, you will have realized that there are just some orders that are terrible and you would never want to accept them. No matter your definition of a bad order, I think that it's going to be impossible for you to accept 100% of orders that come to your phone. In the past, I have said that DoorDash cannot deactivate you for accepting a low number of orders. And I have used that as evidence to say that acceptance rate doesn't matter. But there is much more than just that to talk about. And so by the end of this video, hopefully I've convinced you that DoorDash acceptance rate does matter. Let's go back to something that I just said. DoorDash cannot deactivate you for having a low acceptance rate. It is written on the DoorDash website. You can go check it out for yourself. There is not a minimum threshold you need to hit as a DoorDash driver to where DoorDash may not deactivate you. You can have a 100% acceptance rate. You can have a 0% acceptance rate. So for beginner drivers out there that have this question and you maybe you're accepting a high amount of orders, just know that you will not be punished in any way for continuing to decline offers. Currently, my acceptance rate sits at 10%. And before you type in the comments that that's too high or that's too low, uh, I have a solid reason to justify why it's at 10%. And so hopefully you stick with me to find that out. Now that you know my acceptance rate and you know that you can't get deactivated, let's get into some of the points that will affect this acceptance rate. Number one is that we are independent contractors with DoorDash. We are not employees, and therefore we own our own business. We get a different tax form than employees get, and it means that we have freedom and flexibility to work whenever we want, to accept whatever offers we want, and we have to do our own taxes at the end of the year because we are held more responsible. As business owners, we need to care about the revenue that we're bringing in for our business as well as the expenses that we are paying to run our business. We need to care because we need to know if we are being profitable. If we make $30,000 a year, but then we spend like 20,000 of it just to run this business, that is not going to work. We have to make sure that we are maximizing our revenue and minimizing our expenses. Now, I don't wanna say that we should be overanalyzing our acceptance rate. And like I said, mine is at 10% right now, but that doesn't mean that I'm always trying to get it to 10%. If it's too high, I'm not declining more orders. If it's below 10%, I'm not trying to accept more orders. It's just in the natural flow of things. I know that around 10% in my market will probably lead me to making the most money per hour. Over the past couple of years, I've analyzed my market and realized that if I decline a low paying offer, if I decline multiple low paying offers, then eventually I'm probably going to get one that is more worth my time and it'll actually make me more money per hour. And uh, that leads me into the next thing is that you need to find a dollar per hour that you want to make in revenue. Some people decide to make a total dollar goal. Let's say hit $150 earned that day. Some people like to make dollar per mile goals saying I want to hit at least $1.50 per mile driven. Uh, those are good things. I don't want to disparage those, but I do think the most important thing that we can do as business owners and someone who should value your time is the dollars per hour. I need to know if it is worth it for me to be out on the road at this specific time instead of me working on something else or maybe spending time with my family. Uh, it needs to actually be worth it for me to drive out there because like you know, I run this YouTube channel and I do make money from it. And so if I feel like I'm not making enough money on the road and maybe I should be spending more time on this YouTube channel uh, making higher quality videos for you so that I can maybe get paid more from YouTube. 
And uh, as business owners, as independent contractors, you can find yourself something to do too. You don't need to only be relying on delivery driver income to make sure that your bills are paid and you have enough money left over for uh, saving, investing, and just for other fun things that you want to do. Uh, since we do have the flexibility in our schedule to work whenever we want, we should also be worrying about, okay, what else can I make income from? Some of you are W-2 employees and they were working full-time or part-time for another company. And some of you are independent contractors making money elsewhere other than delivery driving. I love this job because I am able to choose to work this to make my money, or I can choose something else to make my money. That's why usually on the road, if I'm delivering during a busy time, I will set my dollars per hour goal at $30 an hour. And maybe if it's not so busy, I might set my goal at $25 an hour. And I'm not saying that I hit that every single time. I'm just saying that's what I try to do when I deliver every time to make sure that I'm not wasting my time while on the road. I do my absolute best to accept orders that fit that criteria. I also want to make sure that I'm accepting orders that will drop me off in a pretty busy area or at least like within a mile or two of a busy area so it's easy for me to drive to the nearest hotspot. $30 an hour in revenue is pretty good and it's also easy to use as an example. So $30 an hour is basically just earning 50 cents per minute. If you have analyzed your area enough, you can pretty much guess how long an order is going to take you. Say like if it's a $6 order and it's taking you 1.5 miles, well, if the road isn't that busy, you can usually go to the restaurant, pick it up and deliver it, and maybe even drive back to your hotspot all within 12 minutes. If you can do that, an order in 12 minutes for $6, then that is $30 an hour right there. Of course, you have to think about the downtime you have in between orders. And so your acceptance rate is also important right there. Let's say it takes you another 10 minutes to find your next order that is going to be about $30 an hour. Well, if it takes you about 10 minutes where you're making $0 right there, then it's probably not worth it to decline a bunch of these orders that are coming through. Maybe you should lower your standards just like a little bit and maybe take something that will help you reach like $25 an hour. And hopefully if you take that, then the next time you're cycling through orders, then you can get something that is more worth your time. Now with DoorDash hiding tips on many orders, uh, it may be difficult to estimate how much you're gonna get paid for that one order. And so there are other helpful tools out there that you can use. Para is one of them. Sometimes they are able to accurately predict exactly how much you're gonna be making on that one DoorDash order. And so I love that feature about Para. Making sure that you maintain a good dollars per hour can help you regulate your acceptance rate to a reasonable level to make sure that you are being profitable while on the road. Something that I haven't mentioned up until this point is the importance of multi-apping. I use Uber Eats and Grubhub alongside DoorDash to help me with my delivery driver earnings. I really don't think there would be any possible way where I could reach $30 an hour just using DoorDash. I don't think that's possible for almost anyone and especially me, there's just no way I would reach that level doing DoorDash only. But using Uber Eats and Grubhub and letting me have my pick on the best order out of the three apps can really boost my earnings and can definitely boost yours. We've all been there when we're just sitting on our phone waiting for a good DoorDash order to come in. We're just declining ones left and right because they're just not worth our time. But that's where Uber Eats and Grubhub comes in because you can get a huge offer on one of those platforms after declining like 20 DoorDash orders sitting in the parking lot. And so that's another reason why my acceptance rate is so low right now at 10%. It's just because like, I there is no reason to accept some of these or almost all of these DoorDash orders 
when you have good offers from the other platforms. I use the same strategy of trying to hit $30 an hour no matter what platform I use. At this point, I don't really care where the money is coming from. I don't care if it's from DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub. It really doesn't matter to me. I just want to make my $30 an hour. Hopefully I've proved that acceptance rate does matter and why you should be concerned about it. If you're more interested in learning about multi-apping, I have a video right here that talks about it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later.